In this part of the presentation, we provide a quick description of uh, hybrid bonds that are referred to as STRIPS and TIPS. The first, uh, STRIPS, or is actually an acronym, meaning Separate Trading of Registered Interest and Principal Securities. Now, these began back in 1985. Uh, before then, um, the different uh, securities firms um, kind of trademarked their um, they are strips. But what are these? Well, here's how they work. Let's say there is a bond with a face value of a hundred, all right, hundred million, say, with maturity of twenty years. Well, what this means is because this bond pays interest semi annually, there'll be four semi annual holding period. There'll be four semi annual coupon payments. But each coupon payment would be sold as a separate bond. In other words, the coupon payments would be stripped away from the body of the bond or from the corpus of the bond as some would say. So in essence if the bond has a coupon rate of 7% semi-annually that's 3.5% 3.5% times a hundred million dollars means that a coupon of 3.5 million dollars would be paid or received every six months. Each of these three and a half million dollar coupon would be sold as a separate zero coupon bond or single payment bond if you like. So altogether over the next 40 semi-annual periods there would be a total of 41 different payments comprising 40 coupon payments of three and a half million plus the face value of a hundred million that will be paid at the end of the 20th year. I hope you understood that. Really, there's no other um, um, no other big deal about that. So as the acronym STRIP is actually, interestingly, um, quite synonymous with uh, what actually happens with a bond. So we sometimes say, well, this bond has been stripped. The payments have been stripped from the bond. But STRIP actually is an acronym. So one more example. You buy a two-year bond. The bond pays coupon of 5% per year. If the bond pays interest annually, then it will be $50 received each year. And at the end of the second year, you get paid $1,000. So if the bond is a strip, then each $50 coupon payment would be sold separately as a single payment bond. So in essence, there would be three bonds. The first bond is one that pays $50 at the end of the first year. The second bond is one that pays $50 at the end of the second year. So if you buy the second bond, you'd have to wait two years to get paid. You can also buy the face value of $1,000. So if you buy the face value, then you'd have to wait again until after the second year to get paid to receive $1,000. So in essence, if this two-year 5% bond pays interest annually and is being and is designed as a strip, essentially three different bonds are being sold. Each, well, two of them with a face value of 50 and the third with a face value of $1,000. And that's it. The other, which the Treasury created in 97, are inflation index bonds. And again, TIPS is an acronym meaning Treasury Inflation Protection Securities. You may already be familiar with this, although they are no more as popular as they were in the mid to late 70s. What TIPS do, what these uh, Treasury Inflation Protection Securities do, is that they adjust the payment of the bond income to the actual amount of inflation experienced the, during the life of the bond. As you know, traditional bonds pay a fixed coupon rate, regardless of, or regardless of what happens to the rate of inflation. So, and I put here um, the source for where you can obtain inflation data, which the um, which the Treasury Department uses to adjust um, Treasury bond, um, uh, Treasury inflation protection securities. So, in essence, by adjusting for inflation, the real value of interest payments from TIPS is constant in purchasing power during the life of the bond. Now, if you think about it, this concept is quite um, uh, interesting, wise, and and and, uh, and reasonable in ways. Say you buy again, let's say a two-year bond with a coupon rate of five percent. 
Now, next year, the bond has one more year to live, but inflation has gone up. Let's say inflation is now uh, 10%. You would still earn 5%, but the 5% you earn would still keep you short of inflation by another 5%. So as the price of goods and services rise, your bond income would not do much for you. So tips are designed to protect you from that so that the second coupon that you receive when inflation has gone up quite a bit would be adjusted so that it pays you more to immunize you from the adverse, uh, from the adverse, effect, adverse effects of inflation. Here is an example. A five-year tips is issued at par promising to pay a real annual coupon interest rate of 4.75%. If inflation rate remains at zero, percent over the life of this bond, then the bond will pay interest of 47.5% per year in real interest income, right, which is 4.75% of the thousand. And at maturity, you would, re you would receive $1,000, which is the face value. Suppose now, though, that after the bond was issued, inflation rose to 3%. Assume that inflation remains the same. 3% over the life of the bond. In other words, every year inflation rises by 3%. So here, here's what happens. Year 1. All right, remember inflation goes up by 3%. So, and remember the face value of the bond is $1000. And once again, remember that the payment, the coupon payment that you receive, if I go back for a quick second, would be equal to the coupon rate of 4.75 times the times $1,000, which will give you 47 and a half. But not if inflation goes up by 3%. So here's what's going to happen. They're going to take that $1,000 and kick it up by 3% to get 1030. And then they will find 4.75% of that 1030. In other words, rather than receive $47 and um, 50 cents as we showed here, you instead would receive $48 and uh, 0.925, which is 4.75% of the adjusted face value. Say in the second year, inflation again kicks up by 3%. So now the face value would be further adjusted by kicking it up by another 3%. In other words, you'll take 1030 times 1.03. Or alternatively, you take 1000, the original face value, times 1.03 squared. So the adjusted phase value against which you will determine, based upon which you would determine the second coupon payment would be 1060.90. And that'll give you a second year coupon payment of 50.393. So again, if I go back, rather than receive, <coughs> excuse me, rather than receive 47 and a half, you would this time receive 50.393. So that keeps you in line with inflation. And the same treatment goes on for each of the years. So all we're doing here is adjust the phase value by the rate of inflation for that year. And then based on the adjusted phase value, we recalculate your coupon interest income so as to keep you above the fray, so to speak. That concludes this presentation. Right here, I've provided uh, some reviews for you. Many of them come from the end of chapter questions. For example, this one here says the lottery uh, claims its grand prize is, a, is $10 million, payable over 20 years at $500,000 per year. If the first payment is made immediately, look at this. What is this grand prize really worth using 6% interest rate? Now, but look at this now. The grand price is $10 million, and it's paid over 20 years. Each year you get paid $500,000. So that's an annuity for 20 years for 6%. Now, this is from your textbook, but because the first payment is made immediately, this is an annuity due. So that means that on your calculator, you'd have to change the mode. All right, bring this up. You have to change the mode. If you simply go... Um, 500,000 is your payment, and you go 20 is your N, and 6 is your I, and then you compute um, PV. What did I do here? Let's do it again. I might have been in a little hurry here. Okay, once again, um, 20 is your N. Let's click N, and 500. 
thousand is your payment and six is your I over Y and you compute PV that's what you would get alright which is incorrect this is what the correct answer should be because the calculation you just did here is assuming that payments are made at the end of the period but look over here the first payment is made immediately that means that if the first of 20 payments is made immediately this is an annuity due so you clear this second clear TV and second clear work and you change the mode alright this is the begin button second you click this button with begin on it and then second you set it alright it's a set button and now the mode changes to begin alright to so quit from get rid of this just go second quit so now you can do 20 is your n 500 thousand is your payment and 6 is your i and then you compute PV and now you get the correct answer all right, which the author shows here. So don't forget, once you're done with this, you got get out of this begin mode because otherwise it's going to mess up your the rest of your uh, calculations. So again, do second begin, second set, and it switches to end, second quit. When it's end, you see nothing. When it's begin, you'll see BGN up there. All right, and then there are a few others that are posted here. All right, not all of them, but uh, some of the most interesting ones are there. And then there's a couple of uh, additional questions um, um, that I uh, put in here for your review. This concludes this presentation.